Hello everybody, welcome back to Tom Reads Things. My name's Tom, thank you very much for joining me. I hope you're all well. I haven't done video in ages, very long time. Do apologize about that. I'm sure you've all been eagerly awaiting um, another video from me. So thanks for uh, watching this one. Um, so it's been very, very busy at work. Had a lot on, um, went to see my mum last weekend. So been very busy. Hello, mother. I know she watches, bless her. Um, so yeah. I haven't really, I've been coming home in the evenings and at the weekends I've just been so tired and busy that I haven't really had a chance to film any videos. But I am back with a video that I said I was going to make about 500 times. Um, this is a book about classics. So the reason I got into classics was because I thought uh, there must be a reason um, why all of these books have stood the test of time and they must be pretty good. And a lot of them are. Um, so I decided to have a look on Booktube uh, and I thought I would type in uh, where to start with classics. I'd never really read any classics before. I had read um, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, but I'd read that school many, many years ago and thought I would look to uh, Booktube to find out some information about where the best place to start with classics was. And that is where I came across uh, Katie's channel over at Books and Things and just basically binge watched all of her videos about classics for hours and hours and hours and got well into it. Um, and she has a great um, number of videos about classics. She does kind of a, a um, series about different authors. Uh, she is one of the people who organises Victober, which is one of my favourite things to get involved with, uh, which is basically in the month of October where you read um, loads of Victorian literature. Um, and she also does things like Jane Austen July. Uh, so yeah, I will link her channel down below. Do go and have a look. Um, and one of the videos that I came across was a kind of where to start with classics uh, video that she put up. And um, I'll go through uh, some of the books that I um, heard her talk about on that video and some of the books that I've read since and that I really, really enjoyed. So the first book I would like to talk about, and I think this is where a lot of people start with classics, and it is a great place to start with classics. It's an amazing story, and I came to this completely blind. I had no idea what this uh, book was about before, and I started reading it, and I finished it very, very quickly because it's such a gripping, amazing, well-written um, story, and that is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. So um, for those of you who don't know, I'm sure everybody does, but for those of you who don't know, Jane Eyre follows the story of Jane, funny that, um, follows the story of Jane who is uh, an orphan, I believe, and she is uh, raised by distant family members. The family members that raise her are very cruel to her. Uh, she does not have a good time where she is being raised and very quickly she is sent off to a um, boarding school and at this boarding school she really suffers. Uh, she makes great friends uh, but she really does not have a good time. She's very poorly treated um, and she she really suffers at the boarding school and she suffers a lot of uh, trauma as well and she then moves on to become a governess um, at the house of uh, Mr Rochester. So, and the story kind of goes on from there and it's about their relationship and the ups and downs of their relationship, but it's also a lot more about um, Jane as a character and about her, um, how headstrong she is, how, um, uh, how persistent she is, how uh, determined she is to succeed and to be independent as a, a woman in Victorian uh, Britain. I loved this story. Uh, kind of about halfway through, I think it takes a twist and a turn that you were just really not expecting. Um, and yeah, this kept me on the edge of my seat for the whole time I was reading it. And I really, really, really loved it. And it was a big reason as to why I carried on reading classics after um, reading this. So yeah, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Give it a go. So the next book that I want to talk to you about is a Dickens book, and it's the second book that I read of Charles Dickens. I'd read Great Expectations and really, really loved it. And this second book is a great place to start with Dickens. It's very long, but it's written in the first person, so it's really easy to follow um, out of a lot of Dickens books. And I was driven again to this by uh, Katie over at Books and Things. She has lots of videos on Dickens, so again, do check out her channel. It's uh, listed below. So the second book I wanted to talk about was uh, David Copperfield. So for those of you who don't know, David Copperfield follows the story of David Copperfield. Um, he is born to a, his widowed mother 
um, and he lives with his mother and uh, the, the maid, Peggotty. Um, and he soon his mother meets a man who is, uh, let's just say, not a very nice man, and that doesn't do well by David and sends him off to boarding school. Uh, and it kind of follows David's life from then on, really, and all of the different characters that he meets. One of the things I love about Charles Dickens is the amount of characters in his books and the kind of the 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 the, the you kind of get a whole scale of society in his books. You get you get to meet, you know, the, re the really poor members of society and the really affluent members of society all in one book. Um, some people say that David Copperfield's, uh, sorry, Charles Dickens' characters can be a bit caricature-ish. Um, I can see where they're coming from, but I wouldn't necessarily agree. I think they're very, um, they're real heightened uh, versions of characters from Victorian Britain. And I think that's great. That's one of the reasons I really like uh, Charles Dickens. Um, so one of the things I really, a couple of things I really love about this book um, uh, the first is David Copperfield's relationship with his maid, Peggotty. Um, I don't know if this really gets spoken about enough when people are discussing David Copperfield, but it's really um, a poignant relationship in his life. Uh, she uh, cares for him when his mother is unable to because of the man uh, in, that she's in a relationship with. And there's a really poignant scene where um, David has been sent up to bed. He's been scolded uh, by his stepfather and he's sent up to bed and Peggotty is talking to him through um, the keyhole, through the door of his bedroom. And it's really uh, a touching scene in this novel. Um, the other thing I really like about this book is the character of Mr. Micawber. Um, Mr. Micawber represents um, a, a kind of a, a, a middle-aged gentleman in Victorian England looking um, to, to succeed in life. He has a family that he needs to provide for and he's kind of always just on the edge of being able to do so but never really quite makes it. He's a fantastic character to get into. He's he's really great to read about. Um, the third is the villain in this book. Uh, the villain is a guy called Uriah Heap and he the way he's written is just so cringy and slimy and horrible um, that it just it works so well. So yeah, if you haven't read David Copperfield, do give it a go. And again, it's a really great place to start with Victorian literature, and a really great place to start with um, Charles Dickens. Even if you've uh, you've never read any Victorian literature or Charles Dickens before, even though it's quite um, it's quite thick. I think this is about a thousand pages, um, but still, you'll you'll tear through it. It's really 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 good. Give it a go. So the next book that I wanted to talk about is The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. So this book is, I think I've spoken about it before on this channel, it's, um, it was the first Henry James that I'd ever read and really loved it. It is absolutely terrifying, really, really good reading. It's very, very short um, and it really, because of its length, it really packs a punch. Um, so this tells the tale of a young governess and she is sent to go and look after two children in a kind of old stately home. Um, the children's names are Miles and Flora and whilst she is looking after them she suddenly becomes aware that uh, of things that she's seeing around the house. She starts seeing figures and faces and things that she can't really explain and she comes to understand that uh, she believes that the two children, Miles and Flora, are being haunted by an evil uh, presence in the house. And it, the, the book goes through her um, kind of discovering this and it, the, the resolution of this book at the end is kind of a, like I said before, a kind of short, sharp punch. And it's, it's really, um, really rapid, this book, but it builds tension really, really well. If this is a great book to read for Victober because it's scary as well. So it fits in with the kind of Halloween uh, theme. So yeah. Do give this a go. A great, again, a great place to start with uh, Victorian literature and with classics. So the next book that I want to talk about is uh, one of the first books I read uh, when I came to classics, and that is The Warden by Anthony Trollope. So this is kind of, I would consider this almost like a polar opposite to the way that Charles Dickens wrote. Charles Dickens' uh, characters are very flamboyant, very rich, um, and very kind of extreme. 
um, and also his, his the, the stories in his books are. The Warden by Anthony Trollope is uh, more of a kind of realistic novel. Um, it's set in a cathedral town or a cathedral city um, in uh, England, and it follows the story of the Warden, who is uh, looking after the hospital, which is attached to the cathedral. And he is about to potentially lose his position looking after the, the hospital and the residents of the hospital. And it follows the story of him uh, as he uh, kind of fights or in some cases doesn't fight to uh, secure his position um, within, uh, within the cathedral. Um, the thing I really like about this is it's kind of like a, it's, it's, it's really easy to read. It's, it's very the way that Anthony Trollope writes is incredibly straightforward. Um, the way that Dickens writes is, is quite rich and plush and flamboyant, but this is really quite straightforward, which makes it a really great place to start with Victorian literature and with classics. Um, this is the first of, I think, six um, books in what are called the Barchester series. Um, again, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Katie has done lots of videos on the Barchester um, Chronicles. Uh, I think she's done a video particularly on this novel um so yeah her channel is again is, is linked down below so do give those a watch uh she can talk about them much better than i can i just waffle um oh i love waffles might have a waffle later mm. um anyway sorry uh so yeah this follows the story of the warden and uh, uh the warden appears in the other books throughout the series you don't have to have read the warden to start um reading the series you can pick them up um, you can pick the books up at any point, but I am reading them in kind of chronological order. So I've read The Warden. Uh, I've also read Barchester Towers. Um, those are the only two of the six that I've read. So next up on my list is Dr. Thorne. I then think it's The Small House at Allington or Framley Parsonage. I can't remember which way around they go. And then the final book is The Last Chronicles of Barset, I believe. So yeah, Anthony Trollope wrote many, many, many books um, and I am looking forward to reading a lot more by him. So there you go, that is my video on classics. I'll be talking a lot more uh, on this channel about classics as we go forward. Um, let me know what kind of videos you would like me to do in the future. I'm thinking of doing a Q&A soon. Um, so yeah, see you next time.